Ladies and gents, welcome to your reaction, and this is Kadia, Warm of Forty Thousand by the channel The Templin Institute. I reacted to Imperium of Man by the Templin Institute yesterday. In that, uh, they talked about Fourteenth Black Crusade. I'm not what the hell is that? People told that you know Kadia is the video to watch, I guess. So yeah, I love how I'm watching a video. Uh, from that video, more question rises for me, and there is already a video available from that. So yeah. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. So, I know which type of videos to react to more, I guess, which type of channels to react to more. Uh, check out other reacts and take this link in the description. Check out the cast of plays like Warm of 40k with all my Warm of 40k videos and history and other plays too. And I guess comment down if you want me to react to any specific Warm of video or any video. Let's watch it. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this investigation into the fortress world of Cadia. The first 500 people to use the link in the description will receive two free months of Skillshare's online classes. In the region of Imperial space designated Segmentum Obscurus, there lies an anomaly that has come to be known as the Eye of Terror. It Gothic is an sector. enormous rift, a permanent storm in the fabric of reality that for 11,000 years has provided a gateway to the nightmarish realm of the warp. Inside is a dimension of madness and despair where skies weep blood, ancient stars burn. Oh, this is that one, right? Uh, where Eldas created uh, one of the Chaos Gods, right? Why the fuck am I constantly forgetting that name? Khan. Damn it, I'm constantly forgetting her name. But yeah, uh, one of the Chaos Gods were created by Altars, right? Uh, and, and that created this kind of an, a rift, basically an eye of terror, like she said, right? Or am I mistaking this? Really, so that's the one, right? Burn in multicolored flares, and the whims of the dark Slanesh? gods yeah. hold sway. Since the time of the Horus Heresy, the forces of chaos that reside within have attempted to break out from the Eye of Terror and strike at the millions of worlds that lay beyond. Only one thing has stood in their path, a fortress world that guarded the only navigable route to the Eye of Terror, a place where time and time again, the servants of the dark gods would break against the greatest defenders of man. It was a planet known as Cadia, and it was here above all that the bloody work of the Imperium was done. A terrestrial world closely resembling Holy Terra before the age of the Imperium, Cadia was marked by great oceans, temperate plains, windswept moors, and towering mountains. Cadia was colder than most civilized worlds, yet not enough to impede the planet's settlement. It was famous across the galaxy for its sparkling glaciers and thick pine forests. It was the planet's network of strange black monoliths that remained Cadia's most enduring mystery, however, known across the galaxy as the Cadian Pylons. When precisely Cadia was first colonized has been lost to Antarctica. Okay, maybe I'm just seeing connections here, but doesn't this seem like uh, Eden Prime for Mass Effect? I guess uh, Bioware took inspiration from this. There's Prothean ruins, it's a really garden world, I don't know. Antiquity. But in the decades before the Horus Heresy, it had become inhabited by a primitive race of violet-eyed humans who worshipped the Chaos Gods. The Word Bearers Legion and their Primarch, Lorgar Aurelian, was the first to re-establish contact with Cadia. But whatever transpired in these initial meetings might never be known. Lorgar ordered the cyclonic bombardment of the planet, wiping out the native Cadians and whatever secrets they possessed. With the end of the Horus Heresy, the Word Bearers and their other traitor legions fled to the Eye of Terror to heal their wounds and nurture their hatred. Black Crusades mounted across the galaxy from the Eye of Terror convinced the Imperium that Cadia was of vital strategic importance, Ooh. and settlers were sent to the world to claim it in the name of the Emperor. Cadia was eventually forged into a world worthy of the Imperium but it was learned at great cost that the planet would forever be threatened and its entire society would have to reflect that. Its earliest cities were constructed in the traditional style emulating Holy Terra, 
but the broad avenues and ordered urban grids favored any attacking force. And so Ooh, so I get it, 13th Black Crusade, okay, so uh, this is the most strategic place uh, f from which, I guess, the Eye of Terror, all the cha chaos, and their Primarchs and Space Marines, right, other nine corrupted uh, Primarchs and their Space Marines, basically. Uh, they try to take over uh, this wall, basically, threatening, uh, you know, basically, Imperium of Man. And they try to come out from, you know, the Eye of Terror, and the most strategic place is Cadia, so they constantly attack that. So, this has become a very important place for both sides, so they try to take over, I guess. So, Imperium of Man take over this Cadia and strengthen it to look more like Holy Terra, basically. So it's like how in uh, Crusades, Jerusalem was really key important place. It's something like that, I guess. Sweeping changes were enacted. Cadia could not afford any distinction between its fortresses and cities. Streets were constructed in such a way as to disorient any potential invader, arrayed in <laughs> zigzag patterns that would force an enemy to fight for every block. It's a fucking Bastions fortress. Bastions and local garrisons were stationed in every corner and spire that possessed a commanding view while at the heart of every city was an enormous fortification known in the local dialect as a casser. From the air, these resembled intricate puzzles, which could be held for months, if not years, even if the surrounding city had been taken. Its people were no different than its buildings, reorganized into a society wholly devoted to the defense of their world. <laughs> every Cadian was taught the skills necessary to become a soldier from the moment they could walk. Tactical doctrine was prioritized above basic literacy, and every citizen was required to serve at least a four-year term in the planet's military, before either becoming a career soldier, or instead joining Cadia's military-industrial complex. So an entire planet is like a fortress. Every city, every place has this kind of a zigzag, you know, pattern to it, basically labyrinthian type, to, I guess, make sure the defenses are always high, everybody's a soldier, I guess against the chaos, basically, and uh, all the Primarchs, chaos Primarchs, basically. Because let's be honest, chaos is the biggest threat of Imperium of Man. This being pretty crucial place that chaos tries to take over. So of course, I, I, I bet, you know, the uh, Imperium of Man's one of the best soldiers probably could be found here, because they have to defend this place. Even the wealthy and successful elite wore clothing reminiscent of the camouflage patterns issued to the lowliest guardsmen. The famed Cadian shock troops were widely regarded as the best soldiers in the Imperial Guard, and some of the most well-equipped. Regiments either formed on Cadia or those emulating its style and doctrine could be found across the entire galaxy. Cadian equipment, in particular, was so ubiquitous that it was nearly the standard of the entire Astra Militarum. For millennia, the planet stood as an unshakable foundation that challenged the will of the Dark Gods themselves. Every invasion was shattered, and every Black Crusade was repelled. But in the 999th year of the 41st millennium, Cadia was finally broken. Mm. Abaddon the Despoiler, greatest champion of chaos since Horus himself, launched the 13th Black Crusade. In the opening moments, elements of the planetary guard turned traitor, assassinating Cadia's high command, its governor, and Lord Castlin. A reformed defense now under the command of Ursicar E. Creed were able to contain this initial assault, but the Black Crusade was just beginning. In orbit of the planet, an enormous Chaos Armada traded blows with the warships of Battlefleet Cadia. All while reinforcing. Come on, man, let's make a game about Warhammer 40k Cadia. Come on, I'm saying that in every video. This is so good. Enforcement swept across Cadia's skies before joining in battle against the planet's beleaguered defenders. Mysteriously, it was not the famous fortress cities of Cadia that appeared to be Abaddon's primary target, but rather the large network of pylons, particularly those within the Elysian fields. What precisely happened there can only be guessed at. But some claim that for a brief moment, servants of the Imperium working with ancient Xenos managed to activate the Cadian pylons. The forces of Chaos were seemingly cut off from the warp. Back up there. Precisely happened there can only be guessed at. But some claim that for a brief moment, servants of the Imperium working with ancient Xenos managed to activate the Cadian Servants of Imperium working with ancient Xenos? Is that even allowed? 
Imperium of Man working with Xenos? I don't know. Pylons. The forces of chaos were seemingly cut off from the warp, and even the Eye of Terror was said to shrink. Ooh. By the order of Abaddon, however, an enormous Blackstone fortress struck Cadia with the force of an artificial meteor. The what planet's the continents were split apart, its ancient forests burned away. What the, the fuck? They split the fucking planet? Drink. By the order of Abaddon, however, an enormous Blackstone fortress struck Cadia with the force of an artificial meteor. What the, the planet's fuck? continents were split apart, its ancient forests burned away. The few who managed to evacuate the dying world bore witness not only to the destruction of Cadia, but to the expansion of the Eye of Terror across the entire galaxy. With the fall of Cadia, the forces of Chaos had won a victory that for millennia had been almost unimaginable. Tendrils of the Warp have split the galaxy in two, and there is little doubt that the Imperium has entered the time of ending. But the ultimate triumph of Abaddon the Despoiler still eludes him. The fall of Cadia has awakened something in the Imperium more powerful than even its greatest fortress. A hunger for retribution has swept across <laughs> every world, and Cadia has become a martyr whose memory has spurred humanity to ever greater feats of valor. If a creature like Abaddon is still capable of experiencing even a tinge of fear, then he must be haunted by the fact that in destroying Cadia, he has added a trillion fallen saints to the highest pantheon of the Imperium. <laughs> Remember the Lord of the Rings? Uh, I guess it was the third part, original Lord of the Rings, where basically everybody ganged up and everybody's preparing for war, and in the distance, they always fear like oh, a battle is coming. <laughs> I'm imagining Abaddon feeling like that any day now, just looking at the sky. Imperium could attack any day now. I'll load this shit. So Imperium lost. And th this loss is so fucking tragic and such a big win for Chaos. It basically signifies the end of Imperium, but not quite. Because Imperium is basically, you know, gathering troops, any means necessary, preparing for war. What is that fourth White Crusade now? Because apparently Imperium is going to take back Cadia. Oh, that would be so awesome. For even as the planet split apart and its shattered remnants were consumed by the Eye of Terror, the red streaks of firing las guns could still be seen in the darkness. Defenders of Cadia refusing to give in, even as their world cracked and burned around them. Yeah. From their sacrifice has arisen a new battle cry, one shouted in hatred from the Arctic steppes of Valhalla to the deadly jungles of Katachan. A simple phrase that ensures the memory of Cadia will remain for as long as humanity endures. The planet broke before the guard. Thanks again to Skillshare for well, sponsoring this investigation. That was pretty damn small video. Oh, I need to watch some detailed video about Cadia. Does, does that guy Lutin09 has video on Kadia? Because this was way too small, man. I want details. So, you know, uh, some, lots of people are telling me in the comments that pretty recently Games Workshop, uh, the original people who created this, are actually expanding the universe more. So, uh, did the Kadia thing, you know, expanded, right? Uh, did uh, Imperium attack Kadia again and try to take it over or something? Defeating Abaddon or something. Oh, this is so good. I love how Games Workshop is still expanding the universe. So people like this Templar Institute Lutin can make more video. This is gonna be so fun. But goddamn, somebody, for fuck's sake, Games Workshop. Sell your rights or at least make a partner with some good gaming company like Bethesda or something. I don't know. Who can make a massive open world action RPG type of game. Warhammer is such a good deep lore. It it deserves a triple A game for fuck's sake. It deserves it. Multiple, not just one. Who we'll tackle different things? Arcadia can can be an entire game. Imagine a map of Cadia and fight with Cadia. Previous game can tie with this game somewhat, and it's just ah, I'm gonna go crazy thinking about this. Robbie Ball, that was Cadia Warhammer 40,000 by the channel Templin Institute. 
if you like my uh, reaction don't forget to like and subscribe you'll be supporting my channel and you know that way i know which type of videos to react to more i guess comment down if you want me to react to any specific video right i'm gonna react to template institute lutin 09 major kill right that's his name and also that uh, you know that non uh, canon videos but it's just funny uh, about you know the emperor speaks or whatever so yeah i'll see you next time